Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to be looking at a book today, Walter Day's Gaming Superstars Volume 1. As many of you know, Walter Day publishes trading cards. First, they were called Twin Galaxies trading cards. And in later, more recent years, they're the Walter Day trading card set. And I'm friends with Walter, just to let you know. I'm also friends with Jeffrey Wittenhagen and Todd Friedman, the co-authors of the book. Now, just want to take a look through the book. It is hardcover. It's a nice volume. It's good paper stock and everything. It is a little thin, and I'll get to that in just a little bit. I like that they have a bookmark built in. That's pretty cool. Uh, so let's take a look. It is nice hardcover binding. There's a lot of Walter Day and a lot of Billy Mitchell, so if that's not your favorite thing, maybe the book's not for you. But, but it is pretty neat. Colorful, a lot of photos, a lot of images. Walter Day, one of his favorite games, and a game that he was a high score champ on was Make Tracks. Pretty cool. There's some of the old guard. Some of the old score champ, high score champs back in the day. Pretty neat. And Walter Day, if you don't know, he basically popularized the notion of tracking high scores on video games, and he helped popularize esports as well. And co-author Jeffrey Wittenhagen, just talks a little bit about the creation of the book, how it came about in his preface here. More Walter, more Walter all the time. And Walter himself does a little article here about the collection, about the trading cards, how they came about, and some information on them. Now you'll see there are two number one cards. And that might puzzle you at first, but there is an article in here about why there are two number ones. And of course, Billy Mitchell, Walter Day's right-hand man, the controversial Donkey Kong and Pac-Man player, he's at card 1A. But they do put uh, Ralph Bear at card number 2. I like that he has a prominent spot because he did invent video games for the home, uh, home console video games with the legendary Brown Box, which of course became the Magnavox Odyssey in 1972. And different gamers, high score champs, authors, programmers, uh, tell stories of how they met Walter and just Walt, what Walter means to him. And of course, there's a full page right up by Billy Mitchell. And I'm not gonna talk about the controversies, the scandals much here, because I'm just, I wanna talk about the book and what it set out to achieve and did it do that. Ben Gold, uh, he was on That's Incredible back in the day, showing his video game prowess. Here's a more recent picture, obviously, of him. Great guy, really cool. I'd like to see him prominently featured here. And he's at card number four. Lots of gamers in here that you will know and that you don't know. Steve Wiebe from The King of Kong. Great movie. Wiebe seems to be a good guy. Really enjoyed his performance in The King of Kong. If you can call a, a, it a performance, since it's a documentary. Regardless, so you can see they go through here and you can see the front and back of the card, which is really nice. And it's the 2011 Superstars. 2011 is when these trading cards began. There's Tommy Tallarico, who holds the world record for working on the most games. He's a music composer, a good friend of mine. He's also um, president of Intellivision Productions these days. Pretty awesome. And we're all anxiously anticipating the Amico shipping later, later this year from Intellivision. The late Joel West, who had as many Joelisms in Chasing Ghosts. Pretty cool movie. And he is a Berserk champ. The cards are mostly high score champs, but like I said, there's a lot of other uh, gamers. And there are arcades and events. All kinds of uh, noteworthy gamers and gaming related you know, events, topics, conventions, games themselves in some cases. I think for later cards... Uh, they spotlight some games themselves and not just the gamers. But Walter's really cool about, you know, wanting to give people credit, you know, for their gaming recognition. Because even though esports are so popular today, you know, esports competitors aren't exactly household names. You know, they're popular on YouTube and whatnot. But it's nice to get some mainstream recognition here, like in book form. And there's Brian Koo from the infamous... Donkey Kong kill screen warnings in the King of Kong. Pretty funny stuff.
He's a good guy. I met him at Classic Gaming Expo. So you get a lot of photos, a lot of memories of people meeting Walter. Now let me tell you one thing that was a disappointment with the book. The cards themselves are small compared to the actual card. Like the, the pictures of the cards in the book are small compared to the actual cards. What a coincidence. There's a card featuring me. Just to let you know, I will be in volume two. This is volume one. And I will be in volume two because I was part of the 2012 set. And it's disappointing that the cards aren't bigger pictured in the book because it makes the back the card backs hard to read, especially if there's a lot of text. You might get one of those magnifying glasses that are four books that are that are about shaped like a ruler, and you could just bring them down the book as you read. Maybe that would help you read the backs of the cards. And um, they could have made the cards bigger and either taken this out. This, you know, a lot of extra space here that's kind of wasted. And that information is pretty much on the cards anyway, so I don't I don't know why that was important. But uh, anyway, if they would have made the cards bigger and this smaller, I would have liked this book better. It's still a neat book, though. I really like the stories of people reminiscing about how they met Walter. Mark Robichek, pretty awesome. Got some great pictures there at conventions and things. Isaiah Triforce Johnson, pretty well known in the high score champ and YouTube community. One of his awards. Walter, like I said, is very good about recognizing people for their gaming accomplishments. Now, Todd Friedman, I, make, I, re, I mentioned that he's a co-author. He sent me this review copy with a, with a nice note. I appreciate that. There's the legendary Life Magazine photo shoot. Very iconic photo of uh, early high score champs including Billy Mitchell. Pretty neat book. And um, I mentioned it was slightly on the thin side. I mean, it was $30, which is definitely reasonable. And I only mentioned it was a little on the thin side because if they would have made the book thicker with larger cards pictured, that'd be better. Or if they just, like I said, eliminated or cut that out. Richie Knuckles. Great at Space Invaders and a number of other games. Friend of mine, really cool. I've done some conventions with him. His daughter, Ruth, or Ruthie, <laughs> Faithy there. Anyway, it is nice to have all the cards in one place, at least pictured in this book, because it is hard to put a set together. And there's Steve Sanders. He wrote this book for Bantam back in the day. Sold a ton of copies. I think he told me one time... It sold like 400,000 copies or whatever it was. It was a ton of copies. And he was good at Donkey Kong back in the day, but he did exaggerate his high scores even back then. But he's more recent in recent years. He has fessed up to that. And, you know, everybody deserves a second chance. There he is right there. Steve Sanders appears to be a nice guy by all accounts. Some more info on the cards by Mr. Day. And there's some cards that are much harder to find than others, so you get an explanation on that by Walter, including a uh, Ralph Bear error card with the wrong word in there. Todd Rogers. I've got a really funny Todd Rogers story to tell. He is of the uh, dragster uh, fame, and he actually came up to my booth one time at Classic Gaming Classic Gaming Expo, or actually Classic Game Fest, not the Classic Gaming Expo, it was the Austin show, Classic Game Fest. And he signed a copy of my Dragster uh, cartridge without even telling me, which was interesting, and then I sold it later. I'll tell that on a Tales from Retro Gamer episode one of these days. Makes for a great story. So you get the basic idea. Trading cards, uh, information on the back, you know, what they're known for. Nice picture of everyone. Pretty cool. And it's really neat. I remember in 2012 when I got my first card, I've got, I think I have, there's seven of me in the series. I really liked that. Um, it was kind of cool, especially the first one. I was like, wow, it's like being on a baseball card. Next best thing, I suppose. Thor Acklin, another Dallasite. Thor worked for gaming companies back in the day. Was sort of a spokesman. Pretty cool. 
also a legendary Tetris player and a Nin Nintendo World Champions champion out of, you know, over a million entrants. Pretty awesome. Anyway, you get the idea. See, there's, a, there's an example of a programmer featured in the book, Eugene Jarvis. Great guy, amazing programmer, an absolute pro. Let's find his card here. He designed some of my favorite, four of the, <clears throat> those four games there, Defender and Stargate, Robotron and Cruising USA. Love all four of those. I'm pretty bad at Defender and Stargate, but I'm pretty decent at Robotron and Cruising USA. All excellent games. So you get the idea here. Little, there's an ad for Zookeeper, one of my favorite games. Excellent. Love that in the arcades. So you get the basic idea. Pictures of legendary gamers and industry figures like Nolan Bushnell. Nolan being presented his card by Walter and Billy. But it is nice throughout. I just wish the card images themselves were bigger. There's Leonard Herman, a very influential gaming author. Wrote some early gaming books. All right, guys, there you go. Walter Day's Gaming Superstars Volume 1. I'm told that Volume 2 will be on a Kickstarter um, in the not-too-distant future. And I will put a link to where you can get Volume 1 in the description of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've read this book and what you thought of it. I read it cover to cover. I really thought the... Uh, the stories about people meeting Walter Day were pretty interesting, and some of I wish that some of them could have been a little longer, but they were interesting, and I did have fun reading the book. I appreciate getting a review copy. That's awesome. But let me know if you've read this book, and also let me know if you've met Walter Day and what that was like, because the book does focus a lot on people's stories meeting Walter Day. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you later.